Hi, good day. Uh, so this is a recording of the previous video on using Angular Material UI in the Yeoman Angular Full Stack Generator, which is a gen Yeoman generator for the main stack, which is Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. Now, what I'm going to be showing you is how to get Angular Material UI to replace the default UI used in that generator, which is Bootstrap UI. Um, some people have had trouble with it, so I did it and it was fairly easy and straightforward. No trouble at all, no tricks. Now, the reason I'm recording this video is re-recording this video is because in the previous video, um, my terminal was a bit small. And so I got some feedback saying, hey, um, you know, just kind of redo the video and zoom in a bit. Uh, so that's what I did. So let's just get started. So for this video, what are you going to need is to have Node NPM installed already, Bower, um, because that's going to be used for managing the front-end client libraries like Angular and Angular Material, all the stuff your application, web application would need, those JavaScript libraries. And of course, um, NPM is going to be used to manage the libraries used on the back-end, grunt, all that sort of thing. Um, the other thing you need is, even though this generator is for the main stack like that, which is um, MongoDB, uh, Express, Angular, and Node, we're not going to generate the application to use Mongo. So you really don't need Mongo for this video. Uh, if you do want to build out a web application with storage in the back end, well, you can generate it this way without Mongo as your back end and then use something else to create your RESTful back end. You, know, you could use Java or something or some another Express application. Or if you do want to make one application with Mongo, just install Mongo, start it up, and then select yes for if you want Mongo. As you see, you're going to see when I go through the tutorial, I'm going to say no, but you can say yes. So, all right, let's get started. So, this video is not too long. I already spent two minutes talking. So, here we go. So, what you want to do is say make a directory to store my project. And then call it Angular Material, and then I'll cd into that directory. Uh, if you're on Windows, all you have to do is make directory, then cd into the Angular, you know, JS directory. All right. Uh, now we're in directory. There's nothing in there. It's totally empty. And I'm gonna say yo, Angular full stack. Now I'm not gonna show in this video how you install Yeoman or any of that stuff, but I'll get back to that in a minute. So I'm going to use yes JavaScript. I'm going to say yes here, and I'm going to use HTML, and I'm going to leave it for the default there, SAS, and I'm going to say UI router, that's fine. Bootstrap included, I'll say yes, yes. Remember, we're going to replace it. We're not going to use it, but still I'll say yes. And um, MongoDB here. Um, do you want to use Mongoose? Mongo and Mongoose? No. And then that's it, all right? No. In this video, like I was about to say, I'm not going to show you how to install the Yeoman Full Stack Generator, um, Angular Full Stack Generator. In another video, which I'll post soon, I'll show how you go from a pristine system, you know, you, know, you have a brand new system or you have a system that doesn't have Node installed. I'm going to show you how to install Node, also I'll install NP, um, um, Bower, how to install Grunt, how to install Mongo and start those up, how to play with a simple basic um, Express application, um, how to play with Angular. So I have some separate videos to just address each one of those topics and technologies individually. And so look for look look out for those just for those videos to come. And um, but here I'm gonna kind of jump ahead a little bit. So okay, this is almost at the end there where it's gonna be finished in a minute. So while I was doing that, I'll go over to my web browser and I'm just going to type Angular Material and I press enter and I search in Google. There it is, the very first link. I'm going to click Getting Started and I'm going to use using Bower because that's what we're going to use. And I'm going to copy this. And this is how, that's the command we're going to use, hence why we need Bower. Bower is actually, even though it's going to be a command once you install it uh, that you can invoke a command line. It's actually, um, you know, a node 
JS application. Oh, and there it is, finished. So um, here we have um, the project directory. And what I like doing is immediately uh, initializing Git in my project directory. And because I know that oh, this is going to fail, and then what you can do is do git add, but this is going to fail, right? And it's complaining here about carriage return line feed. And what that is, is this file is a text file, and it's using carriage return line feed instead of line feed. And my git config basically says, oh, I don't want to check in files with carriage return line feed. I really want them to be line feed, which is typical of what's using Unix, and this is typical of what's using Windows. So what I know now is that somebody contributed to this project or written this, wrote this project, um, modified this file um, on Windows and committed it to the repository in, you know, hence why I had carriage return line feed. So the easy way for me to fix that is to say vim at git slash config. So for, for this project, I'll go down and I'll say save carriage return line feed equals false, okay? And that's gonna be a quick way for me to just overwrite all that stuff and check it in anyway. So now that I have these project files added, all these files added to git, I can say git, you know, commit minus message, and I'll say initial check-in. And again, none of this is required. I just like doing, always getting the habit of version control in your work. and it's gonna be handy for us to see what change easily. All right, so next thing to do is run. So run serve. And so let's just uh, run this and uh, it's gonna you know, start building the application in the background and it's gonna launch it and we'll see that though here, it's working very nicely. And this is um, you know, with fluid design already. So you could see as I resize, um, it, you know, Resize nicely for different sized media. Okay, screen sizes. So now let's just go right in to setting up this project for Angular UI. I'm gonna stop this project and um, I'm gonna kill Grunt by doing Control C. And then I'll paste what I typed earlier and type minus save, minus minus save, enter. And so that's gonna download it in, that's gonna install you know, Angular Material and its dependencies. Angular Material itself, when you say install my Angular Material, as I did just now, it depends on Angular, Angular which we already using uh, here, Angular Animate and Angular Aria. Those are the things that it depend on. And so we already Angular, so it installed these two. And I can verify this by saying git as status. When I look, I'll see it on my Bower file change, and I could do git diff Bower that JSON, and you see it all. Uh, it had Angular UI rotor before. It just wasn't a comma at the end. Now I put a comma because it added another line, and so that line was changed, and so it added Angular material, and that was the, that's the only change in this file. Um, if I go, well, this this is my that state in style sheet. You know the SAS. It's using SAS, so let's modify that. And then let's do, do git um, diff client index and see what was added here. And it added, uh, it looked like it moved some stuff around here. And, but, um, right, there's nothing was added here. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute, because this file, these, these components are added when you start grunt. And so let's start grunt again. Uh, it updated, look and see what client side components you have. And then it, you know, modified that file. And so let's take a look and see. Now it's running again, the project is running again. Um, so I'm gonna open this in my WebStorm. Okay, and so here is WebStorm. And so I just open this here and see what's going on. So, client application and index.html. And here we go. When I restarted it, it added Angular Material CSS and it also added Angular Animate 
angular area and then angular material. Remember I said angular material had these dependencies. And so that's important because, and that's the reason why I stopped it because I know once I restart it, it would add those to me. And if you go on the angular material website, they will tell you that these are the things you have to do anyway. You have to add angular material CSS and you have to add the dependency angular, angular animate, angular aria before you add angular material. But remember this project is based on angular, so it had angular before, right? So the only two, three things it needed to add was animate, aria and material, which it did at the bottom here, right? Animate, aria, material. No, that's, that's taking care for you. The only thing you had to do was literally type that command just now, stop grunt, type the command restart grunt. These are the changes you have to make, and I'll go through those kind of fast. You go into the app, and you say app.js, and now you have to say that my application now depends on umng animate and ng material. That's it. So those are the other change you have to make to say your application dependence. Now, if you don't understand Angular, this doesn't make any sense where you're depending on it, but this is a module presided, provided by the um, ang material, Angular Animate library we pulled in, and this is material, um, a module provided by the materials that we want to use. And now we can go modify our main page here, um, actually here, our application. We can go modify to use Angular material. So let's just go to Angular material website, go back a few pages, and go to directors. And let's pull up some directors to use. And so there's the button directors. And let's just copy a few of these buttons and drop them on our page. And so here is main.html. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right to the top. I'm going to say div class container and then div class. And I'm going to say row. And then I'll just paste this in there. And then I'll go back to a page and there you see it, flat button. And this is a link, if I click this, it goes to Google. And so you can see my buttons are working and this is a disable button, okay? Um, let's go grab something else so we can go input. Now with the input, when you use input, if it, the input type is text or text area, you must enclose that MD input here in an MD input container. Only for those two. Uh, you can see here, this is text. Oh, I don't think they, they documented somewhere. Anyway, but trust me. And so um, let's go back to the code. And I'll paste that below here. And again, I'll go back to the application. I notice that it's refreshing and there's the animation and it's red because it's required, it's a required field. If I type one thing, it turns green and then if I type a couple, zero, that's the 10 max, but if I type one more, then you know, it's red. So, so that is working. So you can see this has worked very easily. It was very easy to get this inside of our application. Now I'll do one last, um, Directive and this guy, I'll copy this guy. I'll go paste it in here. And then I'll change this from my value to color. And I'll, and that's it, because now that um, this model is the same as this model, as I change the slider, my input there is gonna change. And so you'll see just that. And so here's the slider, and as I change it, bap, 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 you could see it changing there. And so that's it. Um, not that hard, I think. Okay, no issues. All right, thanks. And I hope uh, this is easier to see. Um, so take care and I'll be following up with more videos. So come back and follow me on this path as I go through videos and you know show you more and more as I learn more and more. And definitely post questions if you have them. And uh, what I don't know, I'll try and research and We'll discover together. Take care. Bye.